The following program is sponsored by The Greek, Ely's Radio Shack dealer at 570 Altman in downtown Ely, and brought to you as a public service by Georgetown Media in Ely, Nevada. Special meeting of the White Pine County Commission and the White Pine County Road Commission, September 2nd, 2020. start the meeting scheduled for 8 a.m. so here we go welcome to the uh, September special County Commission meeting here at the White Pine County Library on this September 2nd I'll please stand and join us in the pledge and uh, Lori why don't you lead us today all right thank you very much I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. As is normal, we'll allow the first moment of the meeting for prayer, meditation, or whatever you'd like. So let's go into that right now. Okay, that being said, we'll go into the uh, first item on the list, which is public comments. Is there any public comment uh, on the phone this morning? No, sir. Any public comment in the audience? Seeing none, George, please come. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, in uh, looking over your agenda, item two should be number one, and uh, number one should be number two. There is no bonding. We should be playing this silly game forever. There's been plenty of time. Uh, you're mistreating me, and yet you're making allowances for others. Either you have rules and regulations, or you don't. Mr. Chairman, I've told, uh, I've asked uh, before, and I'm going to ask it again. How many discrepancies or deficiencies do I have to bring before you before you do something about the building inspector? Who, selected, who is selectively enforcing the law under color of law. I told you numerous times that the biggest single detriment to growth in our city and our county is the building inspector. You're not doing anything. It's time you do something. Shake a leg, something. Depend on who you are, nothing gets done, or there is no problem. And that needs to stop. The discrimination needs to stop. Mr. Chairman, state health mandates must be worn along with social distancing when out in the public or in public meetings. Again, Mr. Uh, Bolas here has attended at least nine to ten meet public meetings that I also have attended. Has not worn a mask. As a public official who took an oath to enforce and abide by all laws, needs to comply or resign. The rest of the commission has the same obligation. Do your jobs and resign. You also are. Uh, which I say, not entitled, you're, uh, you're to enforce these laws or get rid of them, one of the two. Don't do it selectively. The biggest problem we have in this community when someone comes in, let's say in my store, without a mask, is the example you folks set when you set the rules and the regulations. You gotta stop that. Recent uh, COVID counts now are up. 
40 active, I think it's 28 uh, positive, and nine pending. We're not going down. We're lucky we live where we do. I'm concerned that we lost the uh, public health officer who worked for peanuts $50 a month. Now we're spending thousands. Where are you going to get the money? Mr. Chairman, uh, I told you back in uh, July 15, 2020, the Planning Commission approved an application to split one acre parcel from a 3.8 acre parcel going against the established rules and regulations. I protested that. The appeal is this commission, and you've yet to put me on an agenda. I'm tired of the selective enforcement. Don't create rules and regulations for some that you don't intend to enforce, period. Stop the selective enforcement. Mr. Chairman, the uh, meeting held uh, August 12, 2020, you were to consider a payment to Center Ray Bradbury to prepare the Heritage Park conceptual plan for a simple round 18 grant application. I asked, where is the proposed location of Heritage Park? I'm still waiting. If it's be, uh, up there by Loves, again, you do not put a park near a correct stop. Again, I'm going to have to your three minutes are up shortly. Thank you. I'll be back. All right, is there any other public comment uh, on the phone? In the building, if not, seeing none, hearing none, we'll go ahead and go on to open the meeting. Mike, uh, I talked to you yesterday. Do you think we should do number two first, or should we just go ahead and order? I was hoping the BLM was going to be here, but they're not here. Yeah, we can do number two. Let's, uh, let's go ahead to page two, uh, item two. Item two is discussion for possible action, the approval and status factory arrangement with Western Oil and Western Gold for the road maintenance of County Road 1177 contingent upon the BLM approved sufficient bonds for CR 1177 within 30 days. Is there any action on that? Yes, so uh, yeah, if I can have Bill come up and explain some of his correspondence with James Franklin at Western Oil. Uh, at the last meeting, if, if you recall, James had presented a uh, uh, draft agreement that they would be willing to enter into. So I forwarded it to Bill and asked for his comments, of course, to see what would work. He provided some comments in an email form. And was it Monday that I forwarded it to him, or was it yesterday morning? I forwarded it back to James Franklin. I said, look, try to incorporate these comments from Bill Calderwood and uh, present another draft. Basically, the statute only requires a satisfactory arrangement. It doesn't even require an actual road maintenance agreement, but if that's what your road super requires, then that's what we require. So we're uh, waiting to hear back from James, and uh, Bill had some correspondence from him last night. I received a, at 2.51 p.m., I received a email from James, and I'll just read it to you, dear Bill. I received a suggestion to the road agreement. I need to discuss a couple of issues. I'm leaving for the field, but we'll work on the agreement late this afternoon and send it over, which I have not received as of when I came to this meeting. If you're available later this evening or early tomorrow morning, before the meeting to discuss, please advise. So I sent James a text message and I sent him an email that I was available at 6 a.m. this morning and if he wanted to come visit with us, um, I was available and I had heard nothing from him. Um, real quick, they did about a 500 foot test of the gorilla snot. Uh, Mark went out and looked at it. I'm, we don't have much confidence it's gonna work, but we did. they did commit and do that. Um, we are to the process now for the road department. We're waiting on the BLM to respond and give us permission for the test pits to give a gravel source. Um, we're to the point with the water wells now where the, we're ready to roll on, but per the commitment from James Franklin, we, I will send him an email. We're ready to roll on the water permits, but in order to get a right away from the BLM, let me see what it is, an application. Yeah, they need a right away. To, yeah, we'll need a right away. Um, we're working with now with Alicia Hankins. And this is, um, please submit a separate SF-299 application for each location, along with copies of the water applications permits to the state engineering if you have them. So this is kind of, to me, the point, use Mike's, show me the money because the engineering cost for each um, uh, application is about $2,500 and about 
for the actual permit to the state. So it, there's where we're at right now. I'll forward this to James, and I've already talked to Basin Engineering. They're ready to assist. I let them know that if there's any financial agreement for this, the, the county will accept it, will sign for the water rights, but financially, it's Western Oil that committed that they would do this for us, along with the drilling and whatever. Okay? And that's about what we got. I can forward that on to them and let them know we're waiting on them. But as far as the agreement, I don't think a thing has changed that I'm aware of. I think it's... As of right now, uh, without even the written agreement or anything, do you feel that you have a satisfactory arrangement with what, with Western Oil? <laughs> no, um, show me the money at this point. I don't want to speak for the commission, but I think if they, the agreement should be simple, Yeah. bring the roads back to the pre-existing condition, um, have something in there that the road, public works, the road superintendent will approve them as they go forward with the process, will help with travel, they take care of the wells, and bond for the amount. Because without financial promise, we're really nowhere. We're no, we're not anywhere at this point in time. In my opinion, I just yeah. And I think uh, a simple agreement is really easy to do, and I think that's what we were working on with Western Oil. But I was assuming maybe he would be here this morning with something based on his email. Has he been in contact with the clerk's office at all about when this meeting? Was I uh, I sent him a text yesterday. Uh, and it shows it delivered. I said, hi, James, meeting on the road is tomorrow at 8 a.m. in the regular room. And I he, didn't hear nothing back. He called and left a message on my voicemail. Um, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, saying, we're here for the meeting. I think it was at 8.30 yesterday, perhaps. Um, but I was not, I, I was busy all morning on conference calls and working. He called back. The other lady that was with him was here yesterday before we had our, our meeting the gridplex thinking it was yesterday I said no it's not it's tomorrow so you told her I told her she was right out here and so she said okay but I, I mistakenly told her nine and when I met with Travis I told him I told the lady nine and so Travis and I when we did the agenda yesterday he sent he immediately sent a text message to James uh, saying that it was at eight and that was right yesterday at three o'clock so uh, right now where we're at if somebody has his phone number or his text number, try to get him a hold of him one more time, give him one more opportunity to be here because we need to move forward with this with this agenda item. So let's he knows what time it was, let's see if we can catch him and try to accommodate him as much as we can. Otherwise we're gonna move forward with this I, I feel we should move forward with this item. Well you see in the item it's uh, we I even draft it in such a way that they can obtain the BLM approved bonding within thirty days. So they can just get the agreement in place to fill of the responsibility and what the next steps are going to be, trying to make it as easy as possible. Just that assurance. Mm -hmm. well, this was even given them an extra day. I mean, he, he, I mean, he's like I said, he dropped the agreement off. Bill did his due diligence. He sent over his comments. I forwarded it to James. He recognized he received the comments from Bill, and then all they had to do was incorporate them and send a draft over to Bill, or ask us to incorporate them. In the draft the day. Um, yeah, you can check your email one more time, but I didn't have any other emails or correspondence or anything. Um, Here's James now. Hi, James, we're here at the meeting. Oh, okay, I thought the uh, meeting was at 9. Nope, 8. And then that's dropped. Okay. Yeah. Travis? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's at eight. We're here already. If you can run up quick. Okay. See you in a sec. Yep. Bye. Just hit him Thought it was a nine. He, he's in town. They're coming right now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, where are we at, Mike? Uh, take a five-minute break. <laughs> I'm just going to say the same. The same thing. <laughs> take a quick break. We give him afford every opportunity that we can. Does anybody have the phone number for the BLM? Anybody know that number, Jared's number, or be on the phone number? Nine eighteen hundred, maybe. Nine eighteen hundred. Yeah, that's it. Eighteen hundred. Yeah. Possible action: the approval of satisfactory arrangement with Western Oil or West and Western Gold.
for road maintenance on County Road 1177 contingent upon obtaining BLM approved sufficient bond for 11, County Road 1177 within 30 days. So Bill, why don't you give us that same update you just did for- I just updated the commission on the gorilla snot that you did a 500 foot test. Um, and uh, Martin had went out and looked at it. Um, oh, and then on the, the gravel pits where we're at with those, we're waiting for the BLM. And then for the water permits, we are ready to roll with whatever number I said for an application. But the next step has to be with you guys to work out some kind of financial agreement with Basin Engineering yes. to pay for his, their cost and then the cost for um, the actual application to the state and the, on, our, on the county's behalf. I've visited with Basin Engineering. They are aware that you'll be in to um, get those, work out that financial agreement with them and then we will be moving forward with getting the wells um, applications going. We also are going to submit, uh, talking with VJ, we're probably going to submit for a temporary application and then a, a what? Firm, sorry, a permanent <laughs> application. The temporary app process will be quicker. So that's his recommendation to go. Excuse me? I'm sorry, is that two or three? Two is what we have identified now. And we've moved, we used your recommendation for water and then we moved another one and the other um, place we're looking is adjacent to the road. It's just easier for us. And we've moved everything that we originally requested in prime sage-grass habitat. We moved it into general, just trying to make this process go quicker. Okay. So that's kind of where we're at is right now with you guys and, and taking that next step with water and with BLM and gravel. Okay, great. Uh, Bill, can you talk real quick about them covering the cost for the engineering services for the water rights? That's, yeah, that's just kind of what I just, yeah. yeah. That's okay. okay. It's, reading it's about, I think it's, it's, I believe it's about $2,500 for BJ's, and it has to go through an engineer yeah. per application, and then whatever, I think the state's is three or $400 for an, app, an actual application. Okay. So, any, any problem with that, James? No problem with that, sir. So I have a, the, this agreement looks like, I have my hand, I has a incorporated suggestions from Bill. It talks about the four inch minus gravel. It talks about that they will obtain, it says here, in addition, the appropriate BLM minerals exploration bond will be obtained for the road damage at an amount set by BLM and obtained by Western World. Western World within 30 days of execution, which is exactly what we asked them to do. Because it takes a while for BLM to get do that calculation and, and give them an amount. That's not something they can just come up with. Um, because BLM is the one that's requiring a mineral exploration bond for that road. It's a different than the other bonds that place already. Is that clear to everyone? Yeah. Uh, down here says county inspection work review. Road repair should be monitored by the road department with financial compensation on a weekly basis with Bill Collarwood or Martin having authority to approve the roads as acceptable. And it talks a little bit about the uh, storage and the type of material they're going to use and kind of talks about water and gravel and their plan for that. And it's very short and sweet. And that's kind of what, that's what Bill had asked for. Yeah. This is Lori Carson. Where are we at on bonding? So um, we'll let James give an update to the county commission about uh, the steps that he understands to obtain the mineral exploration bond. And, and can you come tell him about uh, who you might be working with at the BLM on that paperwork, that process? And James, when you come up, would you state, state your name, please? So you can read it. Thank you. Good morning, um, James Franklin, Exploration Manager for Western Oil. Western. And that's for the people on the phone. Their, their visual is not of the people that speak at the microphone. It's all it is of the board. Okay, sure, thank you. Uh, James Franklin, Western Oil, Western Gold. Uh, we, I, I've been working with um, Elizabeth Bench at the BLM on the bonding, and uh, we are waiting for Elizabeth to uh, come back. She's so we'll be working to put that bond together. We previously, um, last week, bonded for 105000 with the BLM, and we'll find out how much additional bonding that the BLM needs for our exploration bond. Um, as Bill said, we have uh, completed the test on the uh, soil tech on 800 uh, feet of the road uh, with good results. Uh, we're pleased with that, and we're uh, going to
report we received this morning was that your gorilla snot, although you put it on there in good effort, doesn't look like it's having much effect on the road. So we believe in long lasting. I don't know that. Yeah, I think that the, the soil tech is different from the gorilla snot. The soil tech was put on uh, a road that doesn't need water. The gorilla snot is one that hardens and um, you don't want to put it on something that's soft as we come to understand. The soil tech is supposed to just reduce the dust, which was the, um, which was the objective. Um, we'll go out there again today and look at it, but after they did, it looked like it wasn't working. We just drive it down the road. Okay, so. So we have moved from what was called the gorilla snot to soil tech? Um, yes, Lord, there are actually two products. One is the gorilla snot, the other is the soil tech, same company. But one of those, uh, the gorilla snot cannot be put on something that's soft. So you want to put, you want to okay. harden the road first and then put the gorilla snot on. Okay, thank you. Sure. Well, uh, board, I do have Go ahead. I'd have a couple things. In the agreement, and this is partially my fault, it does only speak to one water well, and I believe, I don't know if you can do this, but I believe that number would be the number for 1177. I don't know. Yes. I think so. So one, we're looking at one 1177. And um, the one thing I have a question on the bonding, it says we bonded with the BLM for 105000 500 to bond our repair work from Access Road to 1177 and then north on 1177 for 53,000 53, linear feet. Yes. So that's, that's a little over 10 miles. So where is it again? I'm not clear it, on this. It, it should cover the 1177 uh, road entirely from 50 to the drill site and down the drill site to, to the um, uh, access road. So the 105 is for total amount of 1177? Yes, from just from the uh, access to 5. 250, sorry, 250, pardon me. That's all that was required originally before the Damage. That's why BLM is requiring a minerals exploration separate bond okay. for 1177 that they're working on. Okay. That's all they were required to do originally, okay. and they did obtain that. That's obviously not adequate, but that's that's a, what my concern was. But it is, the yes. second bond is what we're working towards. Okay. I understand yes. that. Does that make okay. sense to you, James? Do you also see that? Yeah, I, it is. Although I have to talk to BLM, and I haven't gotten the numbers or the. You haven't got the numbers from BLM for the minerals exploration bond. Correct. And you're waiting for Elizabeth Finch to return. Yes, sir. <laughs> Can I add some things? Um, the product, uh, this was my project. Could you come up, could oh, you I'm come sorry. up please, Hi. And, and state your name? Hi, my name is Lauren Wilson. And the product that we use, the company is Lauren Works, but the product that we determined to use best by examining carefully, having consultations about 1177, Durasoil. And that product, what it does is dust abatement and also compaction. When you look at it, it just looks like you don't really see anything. But it's a product that lasts for up to two years. And it, so it went on, the, the whole application looked really great. And um, it's done exactly the way that it was supposed to be done. So we're very enthusiastic to see how it performs. I mean, on the first day, it, you know, it doesn't look like much, but it, it's got a job to do. And it never gets hard, and you can drive on it immediately, which we were able to do, and it did not modify, you know, disturb anything. So I feel very encouraged about the product and, and the statements and claims that they made about it. And I'm also in charge of making contact with Elizabeth at the BLM, and we've been making phone calls and emails daily and each time that I would leave one, the next day I would call back, and then it, she was going to be, her message changed, I'm going to be gone now. And, you know, from Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, on Monday. And then I called back again, and then now she's going to be gone for a week. So we're really endeavoring and staying on top of the project, and I just wanted to give you an update on that. Uh, if there are any more questions, my recommendation at this time, 
is this road agreement is contingent upon that minerals exploration bond that the county would like to have in place with the BLM. Okay. He has 30 days to acquire it. If, if we were to execute this agreement today, he would, they would have 30 days to acquire the mineral exploration bond. If the mineral exploration bond is not obtained, uh, I mean, absent BLM saying something else or not being able to get to it or whatever, we'll have a presentation from BLM on that. But if they can't obtain the bond within 30 days, then the agreement is revoked and no one will it automatically. So it's my recommendation at this time that legally, if there's this is satisfactory to the road department and that they will get the bond within 30 days and they're checking with the road department, that you can approve this agreement. Richard, where the request was to have BLM on the phone, did you want them to speak or anything? I would love to have them speak. I'd like to hear from them. That was the intent of having item two read before item number one. Especially if they can talk on the mineral exploration. Bond. Yes. Right. And without hearing from them, we contacted Cody. Contacted us. We contacted Jared. Jared, 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 on. He, was Jared on. Jared. he was on. He's not anymore. Yeah, Cody is still on though. Yeah, I'd like to hear from the BLM before I making a decision. Yeah, Jared. that's why I put too. two up there. I want to hear from the BLM. I met with them last Monday, and uh, Jared or Cody, could you get a hold of Jared or, or somebody, somebody from BLM? Please talk to us while we're in this meeting. We don't want to. We want to make sure we touch every base. We would love to hear from the BLM on this pro on this item before we move any further. It's important. Jared was on. Now he's off. I don't know if he's in a meeting. I don't know if they can hear me talking from here either. So, Lori, you might have to explain. Uh, yeah, this is Cody. I'll, I'll see if I can get a hold of him. I can't really speak to anything regarding uh, what's going on with this, but he was on. Looks like he dropped off. I'll see if I can get it back on. Please. Uh, the idea is we don't want to set anyone up for failure and, and say, yeah, this is we're going to do an agreement with them that they just have to get a mineral exploration bond, but the mineral exploration bond is impossible to get. We just need to know that. Yeah. We've had so many discussions and so many hurdles. It's time to get on with this item. Look, my, my whole theme in this, show me the money. Right? Yeah. Show us the bond that we have assurances. That's I mean, we really don't have much to do with this project other than knowing that the money is there so that we can get the road repaired. That's it. So as long as they can actually obtain a mineral exploration bond, because that's what BLM is done to do, then that's my only that's my only hang up on this agreement for the next 30 days, and we'll know. Once that bond's in place. Well, I personally don't want to hold off for 30 more days. Uh, although that's what it says. We've been here now, this is our fourth time we've been at meetings, which is a special meeting. But to hold it, to open the road to continue a status quo for 30 more days. I don't think I have an appetite to do that. Well, well, Richard, in your conversation, you said you met with BLM last week. Was What was the discussion on the uh, the exploration bond? Did they have they have some concerns, serious concerns, about many items that were on there. The BLM, uh, I, I can't get into too much detail about what it was. They have some, like, oh, I can tell you they have serious concerns about this whole project and the, and the process that it's going through. And that's why it's important that we do too to hear from. I met with Jared Bybee and uh, Robbie, uh, the new district manager. So they have serious concerns, and that's why I, until we're on with our co-partners, which is the BLM, I don't. I'm just speaking for myself, okay? I don't. Hey, yeah, this is Cody, uh, yes. chairman. Yes. Um, Jared's on his way down there. He should show up there in person. He said he got kicked off the Zoom, so he's on his way. He should show up in, in person here in a few minutes. Thank you very much. Thanks, we'll, we'll stay on recess until he gets here. Thank, Thank you. you. Richard, I have a question. Uh, I do too for Mike. Uh, Mike, is there any way uh, legally with the county that they could uh, put an escrow account or a cash bond with us? Like, is there is there a mechanism for that? I'm just thinking outside out loud here. Yeah. Um, I guess Elizabeth would have to talk about more about taking monies and setting into an account that we're responsible for. It makes me a little nervous. Um, and then, just like a landlord who has a tenant who puts a cleaning deposit down, and then the tenant destroys the house, and the landlord gets to say how much it's worth. There sometimes leaves that open for litigation. You know, so or maybe we could just start with something really.